John chapter 3 and verse number 22 through 36 today. We're going to be talking about John the Baptist for a little bit. This will be the last time we see him, I believe, in John. Uh, if you want to know a lot about John the Baptist or more about John the Baptist, you need to go to Matthew and Luke, and, and they give a, a good history of, of, of this man. Um, I, I say we're going to be speaking about John the Baptist. John the Baptist would tell you, uh, don't speak about me, speak about Jesus. And so we'll be doing a little bit of that too this morning. Um, so if you'll read with me uh, in John chapter 3. And uh, verse number 22, and it says, uh, after these things, now what is that talking about? That's, of course, talking about what he has been discussing before, the, the, uh, uh, his um, meeting with Nicodemus. And we've spent a lot of time on Nicodemus, and we won't be talking about him again until John chapter 7 and verse number 50, where he stood up for Christ um, before the Sanhedrin. And then we'll be seeing him again in John chapter 19, uh, as he is with uh, um, uh, uh, Joseph of Arimathea helping bury Jesus. And that will be the two other times that we'll be seeing him. But he's out of the picture right now. We're John the Baptist, this is the last time we'll be seeing him uh, uh, because uh, we're going to be going more and more into the ministry of Jesus. And so here we go. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptizing in Inon, um, near to Siloam, uh, because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized. And John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying and they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except he, it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear witness, bear me witness, that I said, I am not the Christ, but I am but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthy, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath uh, uh, set, his, uh, set to his seal that God is true, and in whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things unto his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him him. This is John's last message, uh, and, and John the Apostle has placed it here so that we can see what John's last message was and just who John was. Just to give you a, a little bit of a, a background again on John, because kind of like Nicodemus, this will be the last time we see him. John the Baptist was born to a, a man, a priest named Zechariah, and a 
um, a mother named Elizabeth. If you'll remember, Elizabeth was the cousin to Mary. Now, there's, there's, uh, you have to kind of get the picture. They're cousins, but they're of different families. Um, John is of the family of Levi. Jesus was of the family of Judah. If you follow the genealogies of Jesus in uh, Matthew, uh, and the genealogy in Matthew uh, begins with that Jesus was the son of David, and then he goes on down from Abraham all the way down the genealogy and presents the fact that, that Joseph is in the kingly line of Jesus, and he presents, Matthew presents Jesus as king of the Jews, and he shows out how that Jesus literally could have been king of the Jews had the king line continued. He was in the kingly line of David all the way through Solomon and Rehoboam and all the way down, all the way through. Mary, on the other hand, her genealogy is in Luke, and it begins with, uh, well, the big chain starts at, at, you have David, and these are the family of, of Judah. Uh, the big chain starts from Solomon, who was king, all the way down to Joseph, to Jesus. On Mary's side, it was Nathan, another son of David, and Luke takes it all the way back to Adam because he's showing Jesus as the son of man. And from Nathan it goes down to, to Mary. Both of these are in the kingly line of, of David. Actually, Solomon is in the kingly line of David. Nathan is not, but he's still a part of the tribe of Judah. Uh, but how did, how did... Mary become a cousin to Elizabeth if Elizabeth is of the family of Levi? And that's a good question. Uh, does anybody have an answer? <laughs> well, let, let, me, let me go back and, 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 and maybe give you a little bit of a, 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 a history. I don't want to go too far back because I, I do that sometimes and I get caught up and spend a lot of time. Uh, Everybody knows Moses. God chose Moses uh, to lead his people Israel out of, out of the land of Egypt. Uh, God chose Aaron to be the first high priest. Aaron had four sons. Two of the sons, Nadab and Abihu, were killed because they offered strange fire. So the other two sons were Elias, uh, Eleazar and Ithamar. And through Eleazar and Ithamar it became the high priests. They would switch off or they, in and, and, and David's time, they would have one, I think one of them even with Ithamar, um, uh, was of the tribe of Ithamar. It changed a lot with Eli and I'm not going to get into, uh, into that. But once David looked at the high priest at that time all they had was a tabernacle and the priests were ministering under the tabernacle and there were over 20,000 priests that's a lot of priests to go and minister at the tabernacle right and they were established through 48 cities throughout the nation of Israel uh, I think they had like 24 on on the east side of Jordan and 24 on the west side of Jordan and they would minister into the cities uh, and they had uh, synagogues and set up synagogues and things like that. But they were still worshiping through the tabernacle. Eli, uh, if you remember, got the tabernacle stolen from him. His children were dumb enough to take it into a battle and lost it. David got it brought back. David wanted to build a house for God, and God wouldn't allow him to build a house for God. Two reasons. One, he numbered the people of Israel, which he should never have done. Uh, and, and the other was uh, he was a bloody king, uh, and that's what the Bible says. But David, what David did was he, he collected the money so that Solomon, his son, could build the temple, and he built the temple. 
Well, when Solomon built it, well, when David, because of so many priests, he set up 24 courses of priests. Zechariah of, the, of, the, of John the Baptist's uh, father was of the eighth course, which of uh, Abiah. And he would have been a son somewhere down the line of Eleazar, the high priest. So what I'm saying to you is John the Baptist's father was a high priest after the eighth order of Abiah of the 24 orders. Now when they built the, when they built the, Solomon built his tabernacle, he reestablished this course of 24 priests and that was maintained throughout history. Uh, uh, and, and so up until probably 135 A.D. Anybody know what happened 135 A.D.? It's a big day in history. 135 A.D., there was a, uh, let me try, try to say this. Uh, there was a king of, of a Roman king named Hadrian. Hadrian was a, a homosexual king. He was a gay king. Didn't like the Jews. And the Jews, if you remember, Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 A.D. And the temple was destroyed in 70 A.D. But many of the Jews moved back into Jerusalem after that. 135 A.D., Hadrian uh, got into a conflict with the Jews. And he killed another 500,000 Jews. He hated them so much that he... That he he knew that the, they hated the Philistines, and the Philistines and Jews fought a lot throughout history. So he changed the name of Israel to what? Palestine. Palestine. And most people don't know that, but you do. And it remained Palestine until May, was it 14th? 1948 when they took back the land in a battle, seven-day battle, and within 10 minutes, the President of the United States recognized Israel as a state. He didn't ask Congress or Senate for their approval. He just did it. And thank God he did, you know. So uh, uh, all of that, I don't know why I'm going, but all of that, um, We okay, John the Baptist, he is... His father, what I'm trying to say is his father was of the Eighth Order. He was, he was high priest, and he really wasn't perhaps that great known, greatly known, or whatever, however you want to word it. But something happened. John the Baptist's father, uh, Zacharias, when his job was to go into the holy place, not the most holy. By the way, that's another thing that, that uh, uh, we're talking about in, in Wednesday night on Zerubbabel's temple and Herod's temple. Does anybody know what's missing in that temple? Both of those temples. What's missing? What? Well, there you go. Two things then. Two things are missing. One, one thing that's missing is the Ark of the Covenant. It was taken during the Babylonian captivity. Now, some believe Jeremiah uh, went in and got it and hid it in the ground somewhere, and, and the people, uh, the Israelites today, they know where it is, and they're going to bring it back out uh, during the millennial time or during the, 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 the Great Tribulation, which they don't, they're just hoping to build the temple again and, and bring that back out. But another thing was missing in Ezekiel chapter 10 and verse and chapter 10 and chapter 11, and, and Pastor mentioned the other day the Holy Spirit, or the the Shekinah glory of God left Israel. We see in chapter 10 where He went out to the threshold, the glory of God moved out to the threshold of the temple. Then the glory of God moved to the gate, the eastern gate of the temple. And then the glory of God moved up to Mount Olivet where Jesus will one day come back. And he left from there 
And the glory of God never filled the temple, the holy place again in Zerubbabel's temple or Herod's temple. Especially not Herod's temple. Nobody liked the fact that Herod was building a temple. He built a great temple, but he built that to himself. Um, so John the Baptist went in, or his father went in, and was, was ministering to, to the, um, um, well, you had the uh, table of showbread, the altar of incense, and then the menorah. And he was ministering, his job was to minister at the table of incense. He may have been as old as 60, somewhere in the 60s. And he was ministering there, and um, Gabriel, the angel of God, told him he's going to have a son. And he questioned Gabriel, and Gabriel made him to where he couldn't speak. And so when he left, he couldn't speak, and he had to write on a board and all of that, and, and, uh, and, and tell the miracle. There were multitudes outside. This was during the Passover time or during that time of, of, of uh, when uh, everybody's there. Well, there was a multitude of people out there that witnessed this event. So what we have is the father of John the Baptist is given notice by Gabriel the angel that he's going to have a son. And this would be a miracle birth not like Jesus, where you have a virgin birth, but this will be a miracle birth because Mary, Elizabeth and Zacharias, what the Bible says, was well past the age of bearing children. How old is that? I don't know. I don't know. But let me put it this way. They were both shocked. They were both shocked. And so John the Baptist was a miracle baby that the people of Israel knew. Probably by the time John the Baptist began his ministry, both his mom and dad were, were probably past. They are probably dead. So John the Baptist, when he comes out, he was believable because he was the son of a miracle, a miracle born son of a high priest that was recognized as a great man because of his visit of Gabriel. Nobody, as I see in the Bible, nobody questioned that. John could not speak, and he couldn't speak for nine months and didn't speak until he said his name is John, and God opened up his mouth. So John was a very important figure in that period of time now John had went into the wilderness perhaps after his parents had passed who knows what age maybe in the age of 20 or so and he had went into the wilderness and through that time in the wilderness he had received instructions from God and and he the Bible says that he lived off a of locust and wild honey and Leviticus chapter 11 says it's okay to eat locusts not for me, but for, for everybody else, it's not, okay? And so he, that's how he lived. He wore the, the garments of a prophet, camel hair, and a leather, a leather girdle around his, his loins. Uh, and so he came out. I'll guarantee you he wasn't some big fat man, not eating what he eat. Uh, and, but he came out with the power of God uh, in his voice, in his demeanor, in his life, and he began to preach, repent, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Oh, to God today, preachers would preach that same message over and over and over and over and echo it through the halls of every church in the nation. Repent, 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 for the kingdom of God is at hand. And that power of God was upon him, and he began to draw people. And as he drew the people, he would baptize these people after they had repented. Now, baptism at that time was accepted. As a matter of fact, as the, as the people would go to the Passover, they had, uh, 
they had little baptismal pools. Uh, 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 <laughs> Rabbi Benjamin Mazar, Mazar, I think is his name, records that there was over a hundred, uh, like tubs and 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 pools of water around the 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 temple of Herod, where and they were required to bathe themselves, to purify themselves before they went and, and partook of the Passover. Uh, and so uh, the Mechved, or uh, let me see, M-I-K-V-E-D, I think that's what it is. I may be mistaken. Mechved. Um, oh, no, it's an H. Um, and uh, that, that's what those little pools were called. And, they, and the Bible, their, their religion, their, their um, um, uh, well, the tradition was they had to be baptized in living water, which means a, a spring or a pool that was made up of a spring. Uh, they couldn't have, even today, they couldn't have tap water. It had to be a water that was from living water. And it was, a, it was a sign of their purification before they would partake. So baptism was not something that they, John just brought on. What he did, though, was he required repentance before baptism. Never in the history of mankind was there ever anybody saved by being baptized. Y'all, y'all understand that, right? I mean, you're Baptist. That's something you ought to know. If you don't know that, then especially some of you folks are, some of y'all are older than me, and that's old. And I'm as old as dirt, and you guys are older than me, so I don't know. If you don't know that, then you're, then you're, <laughs> then you, you, you got a problem, right? So, so John, his job was he preached repentance, and these people came. And the Holy Spirit of God spoke to their hearts and they repented of their sins. Many of them just like you, crying, weeping, saying, Oh God, forgive me of my sins. And John would take them and baptize them. That baptism was not anything more than a evidence that they had done what was required and they accepted that his message. What was John's message? that the kingdom of heaven was at hand. His message was, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. His message was Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So let me see. A church ought to preach Jesus, 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 repent, 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 and then get baptized. Now I believe baptism is a very important part. I regret when I was saved, and I wasn't saved till I was 24, and I don't want to go into that right now, but they held off baptizing me till the new church was built, and, and in that church they were going to have a baptistry. And they wanted, for some reason, they were holding me up as something of a trophy. I don't know exactly why, but they wanted me to be the first one to be baptized in, in that. I guess because of my sin and my life before that time. But I regret that. I wanted to be baptized right away. Because when I was baptized, it was a change in my life. It made a huge difference in my mindset. It was like I, finally, it was like I completed that act. It was I did the very first thing that he has told me to do. Repent and be, and that's an important part, okay? So we have 10 minutes. Let's go. We'll get through this real quickly. Um, and, the, and the verse 22 says, After these things came Jesus and the disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried. So what happened was Jesus left, uh, Jesus left the Passover and has moved out into the, into the area around Jerusalem. Now John, I, and I mentioned this many times, and we'll be mentioning it all the way through. John does not give us a lot of history, and, and we will see some up around Galilee. 
the ministry of Jesus. Most of Jesus' ministry was in Galilee. But why give that to you when you already have it in Matthew, Mark, and Luke? John is writing in his 90s, 60 years after. These others wrote 30 years after, somewhere in that vicinity. And so he already seen that, he already knew that. So what John is giving us and what John is presenting is Jesus Christ is God. Very simple. Jesus Christ is God. And so here we have, after these things, uh, he and his disciples, they, they went and they began to go and minister. And he would preach the same message, basically, as John the Baptist. Uh, and they were very close together. Uh, and then it says here that uh, we know that, uh, uh, let me see. Um, oh, uh, verse number two. Uh, the gospel only records a small portion of the miracles of Jesus. Uh, and, and I won't get into all of that right now. The ministries in Judea. Um, oh, by the way, in, in, in John chapter four, verse number two, probably in the same, right in the same vicinity of your Bible, it mentions the fact, and it's kind of in brackets, that Jesus baptized nobody. He never baptized anybody. Why would, why would it, why would it, why is it important that Jesus didn't baptize anybody? I, 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 I thought about that. As a matter of fact, this morning I, I, I thought about that. And the only reason I could come up with is that Jesus did not want anybody just looking to him only in, in that baptist, as, as, as baptistry. He, he is going to die for our sins. He is going to uh, shed his precious blood. He's going to be buried. He's going to rise again. But at this point in his ministry, he, he didn't want a competition going on. Uh, and, and so he did not baptize anybody personally. Uh, I, I mean, if he did, everybody would want to be baptized by Jesus. But most people still didn't know who he was. You understand that? Most people still, matter of fact, when it, when, remember at the very end, when, at, at the last Passover, we had that Palm Sunday where everybody was laying the, the palm leaves in front of Jesus. They expected him to literally set up a kingdom. And he, and he did not. All right, his Judean ministry, uh, he ministered an uh, area not too far away from John. Uh, and another thing, don't think about the water that they were, you know, people go over to Israel and, and preachers and, and church members, they all want to be baptized, where uh, John baptized. Uh, and, and that's good. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that. It's just to understand the water has nothing to do with uh, anything other than you just did it in a place that somebody said was that place. Uh, John actually baptized in uh, Inon, and, and he, he baptized in Bethabara. He also baptized in Jordan. So there are several areas where he baptized. They were ministering together, John's ministries together, and John was also baptizing in Inon and in, in, um, the springs and, and, and so these were, a, uh, if you look at maps, they're, they're like a lot of hills and, and rocks around uh, Jerusalem and in Judea. And, um, and these are, they'd find areas where there was a large amount of water or enough water where you could baptize someone. That's another evidence why, as a matter of fact, folks understand that uh, the sprinkling uh, of, the, of the Catholic Church and other churches uh, and the pouring that other churches do, that, that's, that's a tradition that started somewhere around 100 A.D. That's one of the reasons John has wrote this, this, this part of his gospel. This was not anything that they did. Uh, as a matter of fact, Philip gives us a great evidence in the Acts chapter 8 of, of, of uh, the Ethiopian eunuch. And the Ethiopian eunuch says, See, here's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest, believest you know, with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he says, well, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And they got out, and they went both down into the water. He baptized him, and they went 
come back up out of the water. That's pretty good evidence. He could have went down and got a handful of water and threw it on him uh, if that was baptism. Right? Uh, that's not baptism. So there was much water there. Uh, verse 24, uh, John was not kept yet cast in prison. Um, and that which what, so, you know, in other words, just gives us a timeline. Uh, there's a controversy that arises over purification. And you can understand this because the Jews uh, were thinking about, well, okay, he's baptizing. So is, is, is his baptism better than Jesus or is Jesus' baptism better than his? Which one purifies the best? All of these kind of things. They get all caught up in purification. Have you ever witnessed to somebody and you say, you, you say, you know, if you, if you were to die today, uh, do you know where you'd go to heaven? Or would you go to heaven? If you, have you ever witnessed to somebody and they said, you know, I went, I went to church when I was just a little boy. And uh, what do you think about Adam's first wife? Or Cain's first wife? Or Cain's wife? Or any question just to get you off the subject. You understand what I'm saying? What you have here is John's disciples... And some of these Jews come up, that, and his disciples were Jews too, so don't, there's no prejudice here. These, these religious Jews or these Jewish people come up, and the other Jews, they were talking about this and that. Rather than telling them about Jesus, they were talking about purification. And, and so this baptism was not the same baptism or purification that they were accustomed to in the temple. But what John tells them uh, right off the bat he said, they, matter of fact, here's another thing. They, they, they call him in verse number 26, they call him rabbi. John accepts that, but he does not accept Christ. I am not the Christ. I'm a teacher, but I am not the Christ. Uh, and his last recorded message, verse 27 through 34, John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it come from heaven. Uh, basically, he's saying, I could not preach today unless God gave me that power to do that. That's, that was a, that's what God gives people that they might preach. Ye yourselves bear witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. Uh, he that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom, and this my joy is therefore is fulfilled. Pastor Terry, you are... You are, you are the bride of Christ. His job as the friend of the bridegroom is to teach you and, and, and help you uh, to, to learn of Christ and to glorify Christ and to lift up Christ and to live a Christ-like life. And because of that, he wants to, Paul says, I'm jealous over you. Um, uh, I, I want to present you as a chaste, a virgin bride to Christ. In other words, every minister wins people to Christ or should be winning people to Christ. And those people he gathers together and builds a church, he loves those people, he nurtures those people, he ministers to those people. All that he might present them to Christ as a chaste virgin People that love Jesus. That's what the goal of a minister is. Um, and I'm going to be running out of time here real quick. Um, I must increase. He must decrease. You know what? The more you read the word of God, the more you elevate Jesus. The more you pray, and I go over this all the time. When I would go to my father and ask for something, just the very fact I went to my father and asked for something, I elevated him because I'm recognizing him as the one to, that can provide it. When you go to God in prayer, every time you kneel down, and, or whether you're sitting, kneeling, laying, wherever, you go down and you, you, you go and say, God, help this person, or God, heal this person, or God, work in the life of this person. God, bless the pastor. Whenever you do that, you have elevated God. Only He can do that. So you have lowered yourself. I must decrease. 
He must increase. The more you study the word of God, the more you learn of God, the more faithful you are to the house of God, the more you lift up God. I'll close with this. Last verse. He that believeth on the Son hath what? Everlasting life. Yeah, what is it? You're in the Father's hand, and, uh, and, and you're in Jesus' hand, Jesus is in the Father's hand, and then some idiot says, well, yeah, but you can jump out. I mean, I mean it's like some people are brain dead. You go, I mean, God can't hold me. He's holding together the whole universe. The reason we don't spin off into, into eternity off out in the never-never land is because God controls all of this, and I'm going to say that he can't control my salvation. I can jump out. Well, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. John was one of them hellfire and brimstone preachers because he goes on and says, and the wrath of God abideth on them. If you go to Matthew and read the third chapter, the first 10, 15 verses of Matthew, you'll see the message and the power of John the Baptist. And he talks about repentance, but he also talks about burning. <laughs> He was a fire and brimstone preacher. Next week we'll get into chapter 4. So let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, thank you for today. Our Lord, I pray you'll open our hearts to receive the message of the pastor this morning. I pray this morning you'll empower him with only the power that you can give. That he might open, break open the bread of life and that we might learn of thee, Lord, that he might glorify you, that he might lift you up, that all of us might see, not only see him, but see ourselves in the light of him. Father, I pray for your blessings today. In Jesus' precious name, amen.